1998, the Clinton-Gore administration issued the Macaw Indians, a coastal tribe in Washington state, a federal permit allowing them to kill up to 20 gray whales over the next four years in the Olympic National Marine Sanctuary. The Clinton-Gore administration claims to have the necessary approval from the International Whaling Commission, but for the record, Dr. Ray Gamble, secretary to the International Whaling Commission, reports, you will not find anywhere a formal statement from the IWC that the macaw whale hunt is legal since it has not made such a determination. Even with this, the media continues to wrongly portray the macaw gray whale hunt as being approved by the International Whaling Commission. In 1997, the International Whaling Commission the International cleared the whaling way. The Commission has given the macaw permission to kill 20 gray whales. But at a press conference, conservationists officially challenged this claim. But I said, show me a document or a letter that indicates, that proves, that shows, that demonstrates that you have the support of the IWC and I'll pull all the ships right out of here tomorrow. But they can't do it because it doesn't exist. The IWC does not approve this hunt, has never approved this hunt, and has turned down their offer every time they've met. The macaw, who no longer need whale meat to survive, and whose last hunt was over 70 years ago, are claiming they need to kill whales in order to revive their culture and traditions under the guise of cultural necessity. But the macaw have other motives as well. Dave Soans, the macaw fisheries manager, said the tribe hopes in the future to do some commercial whaling. There are markets overseas for the meat and oil. Soans says the value of a gray whale is estimated at half a million dollars. Quoting a 1995 government document obtained under the Freedom of Information Act, the macaw are planning to operate a processing plant so as to sell to markets outside the U.S. The macaw have started discussions with Japan and Norway about selling their products to both countries. At the annual convention of the International Trade of Endangered Species, Norway and Japan have continued to push for the reopening of the international trade of gray whales. In Japan, whale meat is worth more than $200 per pound, making the killing of whales a big business indeed. Not satisfied with just killing some 500 whales a year under the guise of scientific research, the Japanese are looking for other loopholes in the commercial moratorium and believe they have found one in their support of the macaw and cultural necessity. Red rain. This has prompted concern about the relationship between Japanese whaling interests and the Macaw Tribal Council. They are in support of indigenous people because they have indigenous people that are from small whaling communities mm -hmm. and that's their angle. So their and, angle is, in other words, that they would like to see yes. a, a, a tribe in the United States in U.S. waters in a national marine sanctuary take a whale to bolster their, their take in their country with their Aboriginal people. And of course, they, we know that J Japan wants to take as many whales as they can, wherever they can. So essentially, their support for you has been to increase their whaling worldwide. That's what's been stated, absolutely. Unlike their ancestors, the Macaw are utilizing motorized chase boats, 50 caliber guns, and a U.S. Coast Guard escort. Thus far, this illegal gray whale hunt has already cost U.S. taxpayers over $4 million and has sparked an international controversy. A flotilla of boats led by Ocean Defense International, the World Whale Police, the Whaleman Foundation, the Sea Shepherds, and Canada's West Coast Anti-Whaling Society have mobilized to protect the whales and uphold international conservation law. Last year, in an ironic turn of events, 10 of our colleagues who put themselves between whales and 50 caliber guns were arrested for violating the Marine Mammal Protection Act because they had come too close to the very whales the macaw intended to kill. This year, under direct orders from the White House, the U.S. Coast Guard is using excessive force against peaceful protesters. On April 17th, the Coast Guard rammed a World Whale Police boat, injuring a crew member. Three days later, 
24-year-old Erin Abbott was run over by the Coast Guard after she had prevented a whale from being harpooned. Erin was hospitalized with a broken shoulder, three cracked ribs, and other injuries. Under the Marine Mammal Protection Act, the maximum penalty for killing a whale is $20,000 with up to a year in prison. Today, Aaron Abbott and other protesters who risk their lives to save whales face a penalty of $250,000 and up to six years in prison. These are precarious times indeed for whales and peaceful protesters. I was just here to save the whales. 25 years ago, when the first Greenpeace protesters put their bodies between whales and harpoons, they were widely regarded as heroes. Today, protesters are being assaulted, vilified, and treated as criminals by the nation that once was the world's most vehement defender of the whales. Congressman Jack Metcalf filed suit in federal court arguing the U.S. government agencies supporting the macaw whaling efforts are violating U.S. and international statutes. The United States government has got to see that the law be enforced. And let me tell you, this whole thing revolves around enforcement of and respect for the law. And we just have to have that. Once we give up that, we've lost a whole lot in this country. This is not the first time the Clinton-Gore administration has failed to act in stopping the needless slaughter of whales and dolphins. President Clinton has elected not to take economic sanctions against Norway or Japan for their continued, blatant defiance of the commercial moratorium. Moreover, the Clinton-Gore administration weakened the Dolphin Safe Tuna Law, allowing countries like Mexico and Costa Rica to once again needlessly kill thousands of dolphins in tuna nets. This is a, an administration that puts trade above everything, conservation legislation or whatever. Our concern is that the United States will uh, be able to argue this thing called cultural necessity. That's why this is so important, because cultural necessity will open the doors to worldwide whaling, which will kill tens of thousands of whales by Japan and Norway and Iceland, the Philippines, Chile, Peru, Brazil, uh, China, Korea. They all want to go whaling. Even among the macaw, many oppose a return to whaling, but have been afraid to speak out against the macaw tribal council. One macaw elder, Alberta Thompson, has stood alone in her vocal opposition to the whale hunt, and she has paid dearly for it. Alberta has been fired from her reservation job, her grandson has been beaten, and one of her daughters has been thrown off the reservation. Yet she stands steadfast in her resolve to stop this illegal hunt and help save the whales. I never saw a gray whale. I had no idea what they were like. And I'm fighting for them, and I go down to Baja, and I meet them. The spirit I received from them was a spirit of trust, that they trusted us. To me alone, I just felt like they were saying thank you to me.
Continuing now with more special coverage of the macaw whaling hunt. Again, if you haven't heard yet, the macaw have successfully harpooned and killed a gray whale. They did so right around 7 o'clock this morning. The United States government's been very, very, very active in helping the macaw execute this hunt. Made history today. Really made history. And macaws are proud people. Perhaps no one is more upset than macaw elder Alberta Thompson. They keep saying over at Nia Bay, it's a great day. But it's to me, it's the worst day of my life. Because it killed one of my friends. With this, the U.S. joins the fraternity of whaling nations and effectively undermines the U.S. voice, which has been the strongest voice for conservation at the IWC for, for years. Activists are left hoping that documenting the kill, showing the world and the International Whaling Commission these images, will rally support for their cause. It seems like this, broadcast around the world yesterday, that have anti-whaling activists livid. Donnie Swan was the man who threw the second and third harpoons. It was like a major adrenaline rush. It's indescribable. I mean, there ain't no words to describe it. Well, you know, 150 years ago, this would have been met with a, it would have been a solemn and sad occasion that the whale had given its life so that the people could live. Then they uh, had to kill whales for food. Now they're killing them for fun. Some climb on top of the whale and pose for pictures, images that disgust anti-whale activists who see this as a mere trophy hunt, a senseless kill. Hopefully, the member nations of the IWC will, will vote to censure the United States on this issue. Tribal leaders say they've received more than 30 threatening phone calls just this afternoon. There are people that's calling us murderers. Midday, the day after, and there's not much left of the 30-foot-long gray whale. Most of the meat is now in cold storage and will be parceled out to the tribe later. And the macaw say there may be much more to come.